So Mitch mentioned that one of the things that, uh, that there's a lot of investment that's flowing into uh, the climate tech space. We're going to hear a little bit more about that from the founders of CTVC, uh, Climate Tech VC, uh, Sophie Purdom and Kim So. Thank you. That it runs on all by itself simply means. Hey everyone. Testing, testing. Who can hear us? Good to go? Awesome. awesome. Shall we sit? All right. All let's right. Do it. <laughs> How's everyone doing? How's climate week? Yeah? <laughs> Not fallen asleep yet? Or maybe there's enough coffee to keep everyone somewhat eyes wide open? Fantastic. <laughs> well, we have some slides to talk about this morning to get right into the detail around what's happening in the early stage climate technology innovation market. Um, something that's very near and dear to Kim and my hearts as we've been covering this space through what started as a humble newsletter just, uh, just under three years ago, is that right? Yeah, we started Climate Tech VC in the beginning of 2020, really as the second wave, the second coming of, of climate tech started to, um, started, to, started to begin. And so really we started off with this newsletter covering all of the deals and companies that are happening in climate tech. And we've now grown this into one of the leading voices in the climate innovation ecosystem. So we have 35,000 plus subscribers, um, corporates, investors at ctvc.co. And we produce a lot of data-driven reporting and analysis on how capital is flowing into climate tech. And we can talk more about what that data looks like, what are the companies and different innovations that are happening in this ecosystem. Uh, quickly on our backgrounds, uh, started CTVC back in 20, spent a few years in venture at a firm called Energy Impact Partners, and now transitioning into uh, building CTVC out full time. So really starting to engage more of the ecosystem, bring more data and information and research into the space about what's happening in climate tech. Brilliant. And my credibility builder, I suppose, is uh, help start a company in the space making a fertilizer, but we do that using microbes, so very deep tech, and uh, had previously been writing and teaching uh, and setting up funds in the ESG space. I like to joke kind of before it went through that hype cycle, and perhaps now it's a little bit back down the other side of that. We can talk about that more later. Um, and I invest in these early stage companies, some of which we write about, but a uh, whole, whole bunch more theses to, to explore. But um, we'll, we'll flip, start flipping through here. Um, but one, one thing is uh, we write this resource and we and our team of about 20 or so volunteers uh, uh, do this voluntarily because we think it's so important to share openly information flows as a way of accelerating what we all care about, maybe from an impact perspective, uh, maybe from a financial perspective, but this climate, climate innovation as a way of not only doing well with our time and you know, playing venture with our careers, but also um, generating a ma massive amount of uh, wealth and impact simultaneously. And so we're here to uh, prove that out and hope to show you through some of these very data-rich slides that that change is already underway and there's um, ample room to marry those two, two pieces together. So please, if you haven't already, check out the website. We've been doing this for three years. It's now keyword searchable, and I kind of guarantee that we've probably written about some topics that you care about at this point. So, And is anybody, is anybody in the audience already a subscriber or a reader of CTVC? Okay. Oh, fantastic. We got a few. Oh, great. Awesome. All right. Well, no further ado then. So I think we, we introduced that. ourselves. Yeah. Um, so this is just a quick overview of, of what we produce. We have a newsletter that comes out every Monday tracking all the deals and headlines important in the space. Then we do our own data-driven reporting and deep dives into specific sectors. More to come there uh, at, a, at a more kind of enterprise level. We're soon to, soon to launch a, a broader kind of research and insights subscription. Uh, and then we also really closely track all the capital uh, in the space, not just the amount of dollars flowing in, but who is actually doing that? Who are the leading investors across early stage and late stage uh, venture and uh, growth investing? So uh, more than 200 funds of, of directories putting, putting climate first. Um, and the way we think about climate tech is a little bit different than clean tech. We think about climate as a theme, not an industry. So it's really more than just specific industries or specific verticals. It's the way that we move, the way that we power ourselves, the way that we eat, um, the clothes we wear. It's really everything we're doing. 
um, energy, food and land use, you can see the list here. And I think a helpful framework to think about climate tech is this mental model. First, we have to understand it. We have to collect data on how our environment is reacting to climate change. We have to understand the impact our emissions are having. That falls in the climate management bucket, the intelligence associated with our ch changing climate. And then we have to mitigate it. We actually have to decarbonize all of these different industries, from en energy to food and land use to transportation to industrials. And then finally, we have to deal with it. Now we've reached 1.1 degrees Celsius of warming. Um, we've already reached some of the tipping points that have happened in climate change, and so part of it is actually removing the existing atmospheric emissions, the bathtub, so to speak, of emissions that are already in our atmosphere, and adapting to it. And that kind of falls in the carbon and climate management bucket as well. How do we think about creating systems to incentivize voluntary removal of carbon, whether that's from corporates or governments? So lots of different industries now that are kind of growing in tandem. Um, I'm sure you all focus across some of them as well. And I think what's exciting is that, you know, corporates are doing this, they've committed to net zero, but at the same time, there's a lot of early stage innovators, startups, uh, growth stage companies that are great suppliers, customers, partners, and I think uh, that's really the part of climate tech we're, we're excited about. Brilliant. So this is the climate tech investable landscape, um, breaking it more down into what are the specific opportunities this is definitely not a comprehensive list, but ones that you know, you, you've probably all seen alternative protein, electric vehicles, but even things that are a bit more nascent, um, like how do we decarbonize the industrials industry? How do we decarbonize steel, cement, and chemicals, um, electrification pathways, or using hydrogen and other low carbon fuels? Um, things like carbon removal and storage, direct air capture, a lot of these nascent technologies that are moving past just um, you know, our kind of traditional thinking of clean tech being solar and wind. There's a lot of solutions out there um, that are really riding the tailwind of clean tech 1.0, where we built a lot of this off of really clean, cheap renewables. Now that's enabling the decarbonization of all these different industries and, and a lot of innovation in these solutions. Hopefully you all see one or two or maybe more than that of a few things that kind of pique your, pique your interest um, up there. But if that's a amuse bouche of uh, climate innovation opportunities, nothing like getting into the data. So um, real quick before, before uh, we start analyzing what's in these bars, our quote like data set, which we'll show you many different cuts of over the course of these slides, is homegrown. So um, we're not pulling this from any existing source. This is information on deals and fundraises that are sent mostly to us as um, uh, the kind of aggregator and source of truth of climate tech deal activity in the space. So um, feel free to uh, build onto that like flywheel and send us information um, about fundraises that have happened in climate, and uh, we're building this very comprehensive database to share back entirely with, with the audience like yourselves. So we get asked a lot about, is climate tech early stage venture funding lining up with where the impact is, where, where the money, quote, needs to go? Um, and everyone can choose their favorite data source, but we've decided to just go straight to the EPA. And on the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see a rough cut of where the EPA thinks that um, at the global greenhouse gas emissions fall um, as best aligned as possible with our seven verticals that we see in climate. Um, and depending on whether you've had a lot of coffee or a little bit of coffee or a mimosa, you can kind of squint and decide if you think this is a glass half full or a glass half empty um, alignment of dollars uh, or rather of funding activity with greenhouse gas impact. But it changes if we change the right-hand side of the slide from N, so from count of companies, to dollars deployed. This one's quite stark. Um, keep in mind, this is just venture funding, right, by sector. So everything's the same except dollars rather than that count. Um, and kind of sticks out like a blue, I suppose, sore thumb. Um, that transportation is probably relatively, quote, overfunded, or at least has been over the past three years relative to the um, potential greenhouse gas impact. So um, more on that, but a, a nice framework of where's the, where's the capital going. And then here, you can see we've mapped out in a, in a fancy mecha graphic all the companies, more than 1,000 companies tracked over the last three years that are innovating in climate. So across these seven verticals, and these boxes are organized by the count of deals. So as you can see, there are certain sectors that really jump out. For example, alternative protein and foods, 
or batteries or um, EV OEMs. And so we can kind of see that the largest N of companies correlate to areas that are probably more consumer focused or ones that have IPO'd such as Beyond Meat or Tesla. And that's starting to drive, I think, the initial tailwind of climate tech of interest in the space. But we're also starting to see a lot of movement in the um, categories on the right hand side in industry, climate management, climate risk and intelligence, in CDR, and starting to see more end of companies starting to emerge there. So we've organized all of this by the core verticals as well as sectors. Um, and then we track, I think, 50 different sectors that you can see here. And then beyond that, actually 200 subsectors. So we go down to the level of not just hydrogen, but okay, how much funding is going into hydrogen electrolyzers? Because I think it's really important to have this climate native taxonomy when thinking about all of the solutions that are, that are happening in the space. And we like to start with this slide because you can kind of see the little boxes. But again, here's another flip. If we switch to dollars deployed, everything kind of gets a little bit more uh, squished together in, in those far to the right hand side, more emerging categories. Big takeaway is, you know, 80% plus or so of uh, the 70 billion that's been raised by these venture backed climate companies over the past two years uh, goes into those three mature sectors of transportation, energy, food, and land use. All right, let's scoot along and talk about the pace of capital. Yeah, so I think you can see here, there's been a significant kind of uh, growth over the last few quarters. Overall, we've tracked $70 billion of funding that have gone into climate tech over the last two and a half years. Um, in, the, in, the last, uh, in the last quarter, we've, or in the last mid, uh, half a year, we've seen uh, $19 billion of capital flowing into climate tech which represents about a 20% decline compared to the back half, which was the peak of uh, 2021, but actually represents a 15% increase in deals. So what the key takeaway there is, even though there's been the overall market correction and the venture capital and funding markets have slowed down somewhat, the actual amount of deal activity has increased as we've seen more and more early stage companies, early stage deals get funded. And I think a significant driver of that is as climate tech has matured, we're seeing a lot of really incredible talent coming into this space, seeing the opportunity and the challenges in the climate crisis to want to build companies. So lots of seed and series A stage companies that are now coming and building solutions across these sectors. We thought that we had maybe cut the data wrong when we saw this kind of perfect 20% increase quarter over quarter for the right hand side right hand side slide. Um, and we should feel great about the founders that are, that are entering into this space here. Um, this one's a little bit nerdy, so I'll do it in 30 seconds. But you, know, you might ask, OK, so why did that drop off happen in that Q4 2021 to Q1 2022? We all felt the market kind of stutter step. Um, but in, you know, it's odd that the count of deals has continued to increase, but that capital dropped off. And it's really just due to one particular tranche of the market, and that's these mega deals, these $500 million plus ones, which, um, as you can see, the, the count of those uh, kind of fell off of a cliff. And so um, nothing to be massively concerned about, but we like to dig into the cause rather than just kind of telling you the takeaway. And so worth keeping in the back of your mind of, um, okay, that might be fine for now that those mega deals have kind of gone on ice, but uh, that will be problematic if this whole cohort of companies that are young right now continues to grow and they need that important um, tranche in the maturity um, part of the capital stack. So let's keep, a, keep an eye on this as we kind of come out of uh, that stutter step. Um, hitting on this, just seeing the maturity of different verticals in climate tech, uh, in the past decade or so, climate tech or clean tech has really been focused around energy and transportation. That's the first step. How do we decarbonize the biggest emitters in our, in our, uh, in our economy is energy and transportation. How do we produce low clean car uh, carbon free fuels or produce low clean, um, uh, low carbon clean electrons. And so you can see that majority around, or around 40% of those deals are later stage. Whereas in industries like carbon removal or climate risk and intelligence, those tend to lean towards the earlier stage side of the capital stack. Um, but we're still seeing a lot of growth as, as those sectors are, are starting to attract more talent as well. Awesome. So who are these climate tech VCs? I mean, we have it on the label of our publication. Um, and 
and it, it turns out that there's 2,500 unique funds that have participated in at least one climate tech deal over the past three years. Now, hardly, we would, they would not ca classify themselves, we definitely don't classify those 2,000 plus uh, investment funds as climate funds. They might have stumbled into an alternative meat deal or something like that along the way. Um, rather, we focus on the core of the bullseye. So these 200 or so true, quote, climate tech VCs. Um, of course, they don't all look the same. Um, and so we categorize them into a few different groups based off of their specialization area or what their thesis is of why they're in business. And we made this list for founders, first and foremost. So um, starting a company, you spend a lot of time identifying and trying to go through all the marketing uh, on, on VCs kind of uh, fancy web pages. And we, we did the work for folks to um, put those folks that are deploying into climate, first and foremost, on this page. And uh, we joke that when the page went down for half a day, we got, I don't know, 100 plus emails of people asking to um, for us to put it back online. This is a real resource, and, and we put it out there for, for everybody to, um, to use. Yeah, and you can scan it. <laughs> let's, let's hit the next one. Yeah. Um, so these are, these are the core tailwinds, right, to climate tech. How is it different than clean tech 1.0? Why should we care today? Um, I think a really big one is technology advances. We've come a long way from renewables being an out-of-cost option. Now it's at cost parity, if not cheaper, than fossil fuels, and that's really what drives a lot of this decarbonization is electrification is the foundation of everything. Um, the second is the climate reality that we're in today. Two in three Americans have experienced a climate disaster over this summer and over last summer, and it's getting worse and worse. We're seeing record flooding in Pakistan, Wildfires in California, I don't need to hit on all the disasters, we, we don't have enough time. Um, but there's policy, there's the IRA funding $370 billion going towards uh, climate tech, not just solar and wind, but technologies across the board, hydrogen, nuclear, carbon capture, and we've done some analysis and shown that on average that might be able to decrease technology costs by about 40%, so that's really significant in of itself. Then finally there's corporate demand. 60% of the Fortune 500 have committed to net zero by 2050. And so not only is it policy that's driving this, it's actually the private markets. It's private uh, corporate demand, it's procurement that's demanding these lower, car lower carbon solutions. Um, then there's the capital stack. So not just venture capital, that's one small piece of the pie. I think it's 40 billion out of nine trillion that's needed. And so how do we start to um, stack different sources of capital past just venture, right? We need a lot of infrastructure investing, a lot of this is gonna be physical things in the ground, and so standing up those sources of capital as well. And then, do you wanna hit on the last one? Sure, I mean, what helps get me out of bed in the morning uh, during a busy climate week is all of these founders. So the talent density of uh, whether those are new grads, kind of climate first folks that are coming into the space and have always known they're gonna inherit this problem, or it's folks who've kind of proven it before and are now pivoting for a kind of second wave of their career into climate. Um, there's an incredible convergence of folks that want to, you know, um, uh, play venture with their career and come make an impact and also make financial upside simultaneously and no better time, no better place to do it. And we like to say there's never been a better time to be a climate tech entrepreneur. So thanks for listening to our incredibly speedy, data dense TED talk. And uh, it looks like we're getting boosted. Very effectively dense. Very so thank you so much. Dense. So thank you very much. <laughs> These two are having a real impact on climate investing, yeah. so the work they're doing is super important. We're really honored to have them here today. Thank you both. All right, bye. See you guys in, your, you. in, in your inboxes. Yeah, that, you should. Thanks. You should all subscribe.